is how long those weeds will those weed seeds will last in the soil. It's a really difficult thing to quantify because one of the problems that we have is if you have a weed, say a red root pigweed in your yard that produces seed this year, there's really no way to tell once that seed hits the soil if that seed is actually from the plant that just just emerged and germinated that year, or if that seed's from five years ago, ten years ago, or twenty years ago. So that's a really real problem when we're trying to figure out how long those seeds last. So one of the ways that we've historically tried to figure that out is I'll pass these around. It's just a little mesh packet. And be careful, they're kind of sharp on the edges. It's kind of like screen door fitting. And we put a bunch of seeds in there. So that mesh allows water and soil and other things to get into those seeds. We go throw them out in the field, we bury them. And then we come back and we dig them up, say in 5, 10, 100 years. There have been seed burial experiments that have been going on for a really long time, over 100 years in some cases. And they're still finding those seeds are viable. But one of the things about a, a packet of seeds like that, although it seems to work pretty well in a lot of circumstances, what do you suppose happens if one of those seeds gets a fungus and starts to decay? There's a really good chance that all of the other seeds in that little packet are going to catch that same fungus and start to decay. So there have been several studies recently that have shown that this method of burying those seed packets actually severely overestimates seed depletion. So the seed actually lasts in the soil much longer in real life where they're not clustered in those seed packets than, than we would ever have expected. So one of the ways that we're trying to get around that is by using stable carbon isotopes. So stable isotopes are basically, uh, in this case, a carbon isotope. Carbon usually has a molecular weight of 12, think way back to, to chemistry class. We actually have some carbon dioxide that we buy, and this really expensive container contains carbon dioxide that actually has carbon-13. So it's just a little bit heavier. So we can then actually trace that through the plant life cycle. So what we do, initially we start in the greenhouse using this box, so we put some plants in here right when they're about to produce seed. We put some CO2 with carbon-13 in there instead of carbon-12. And then the, the seed that those plants produce we actually had that carbon-13, so then we could trace them. So we've now taken this out into the field where we now have put tents out at various locations. We do the same thing, we put that carbon-13 into those tents. All the plants that are in those tents then produce seed that have that carbon-13 signature. So then for the next 5, 10, 15 years, we can go back to that same area, pull up the seedlings that are germinating, and we can tell if they were produced that first year that we tagged that. So you do that in a few years in a row, and then you can start answering some really complex questions about weed seed ecology. So we're just kind of getting started. We've just actually been collecting our first year of field releases. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer, but that's some of the fun stuff that we're working on in weed science right now.